Hey everyone, today I am very excited to be testing gaming performance on the brand new M4 Mac Mini. So these are the Mac Minis that I've bought and I'm testing out the base model today. So that's the base model with only 16 gigabytes of RAM and 10 GPU cores. And this new Mac Mini is extremely exciting as not only do we get a brand new redesign, we also have a new level of base performance in the entire Apple Silicon lineup. And that's the fact that we have 16 gigabytes of RAM as a minimum on these base level machines. And the Mac Mini is very competitively priced so you can pick this up for $5.99, either pounds or dollars. And you can even find many discounts online. You can get this even less than that. For example, I can buy this from Costco for 50 pounds off, making it the cheapest way to get into the Apple Mac ecosystem right now. But also because it has 16 gigabytes of RAM and powerful M4 GPU cores, it can also run many games very well that weren't possible on previous generations of base chips. So in the past, many titles were limited by the fact that we only had eight gigabytes of RAM to play with, but 16 gigabytes is a really big deal. It means that you can crank up the settings on natively optimized titles. We're going to have improved performance with things like console emulation. And I'm also going to be showing you some Windows games being run through the translation layer crossover. And these are games being translated onto the ARM64 chip via Rosetta 2. It also makes use of Wine. And we're using Game Porting Talkers D3D Metal Translate DirectX into the Metal Graphics API. And the performance, thanks to the 16 gigabytes of RAM and improved GPU performance of this base level machine, is actually very impressive. And it makes the new Mac Mini a very interesting gaming proposition, especially at this price point. So first up, we are looking at the game Death Stranding, one of the best optimized AAA native Mac ports that's currently available. And I know you can't see the frame rate counter very well, but we're running this at 4K default settings with Metal FX set to quality mode. So we're using a little bit of upscaling to help with this 4K resolution, hitting about 35 FPS. For more playable frame rate, I recommend running this at 1080p. Here we're running on the default graphics preset and Metal FX is set to quality mode. And we're getting a very decent frame rate of about 80 to 90 FPS. Now, to be fair, any Apple Silicon Mac can run this game really well, even from the base M1 with only 8 gigabytes bytes of RAM to the lowly iPhone 15, but it also scales very nicely with the Mac Mini with the base M4 chip, which is definitely taking advantage of the 16 gigabytes of extra headroom. Next up, we're looking at Resident Evil 7, another AAA Mac optimized port. And this is pretty much a first person horror game set in the Resident Evil universe with a bigger emphasis on puzzle solving and atmosphere. So again, this is a very scalable game designed to work on iPhones all the way up to the highest end Apple Silicon Macs. Here, the Mac Mini with the M4 chip is able to handle this very well. We're even able to run at 4K default settings with the Metal FX upscaling set to quality mode, holding at around 45 FPS. Anyway, this is seriously impressive considering the fact that this is a base model Mac Mini. And if gaming is this good on the cheapest Mac that you can buy right now, then this is very good news. And the next game we're looking at is the cat puzzle game Stray. So this was natively ported to the Mac and remains what I call one of the best double A budget games that you can buy on the system. So here we're running at 1080p at the high graphics preset. And the frame rate hovers between 60 and 70 FPS. We're not using any kind of upscaling here. So this is the pure native resolution. And this this is a fantastically playable game on the lowly M4 Mac Mini. So next up, we're looking at something a little bit different. This is Nintendo Switch emulation using the emulator called Ryujinx. So yes, Ryujinx was shut down by its creator GDK-chan some time ago. However, a contributor called Gream has continued the project, which still continues to get regular updates. I'll definitely be doing an updated tutorial on how to get Nintendo Switch emulation working on the Apple Silicon Mac. But for now, this is Prince of Persia Lost Crown being run through Ryujinx. And most Switch games are capped at 30 or 60 FPS. And here we're able to run at basically maximum frame rate and and it's virtually flawless. So you can't play the Windows version of this game. However, there is gonna be a Mac port natively optimized for Apple Silicon hardware coming out in the very near future. So I'll be covering that as soon as it releases. And the next game we are looking at is of course, Cyberpunk 2077. One of the most demanding games that you can run on the Apple Silicon Mac, especially because this is a Windows game being run through the crossover preview translation layer. Now, again, this is another game that's actually gonna be coming out natively optimized for Apple Silicon early in 2025. But if you wanted to test this out now, it works great through crossover and game porting toolkits D3D Metal. Now, what's cool about the base level M4 chips is the fact that we have a minimum of 16 gigabytes of RAM, which actually makes games like Cyberpunk 2077 very playable. These Windows DirectX 12 games require a lot of system memory and video memory as well. Even at 1080p at medium settings with FSR set to 2.1 balance, we are only using about 8.3 gigabytes of system memory, which would have definitely overloaded a base chip from the previous generations. For example, the M1 8 gigabyte can't really run this game very well. 
but it's cool to see that there's basically a new floor in performance that's now available and this minimum spec can easily run Cyberpunk 2077. Next up we're looking at Final Fantasy VII Remake. So again this is a game that struggles on the base chips of the previous generations especially if they only had 8 gigabytes of RAM and that's because we're running a Windows game through all of these translation layers. The overhead of this kind of game is much more demanding than a typically natively optimized title. Here we're running at 1080p on the low graphics preset and it's hovering about 50 to 60 or so FPS which isn't too bad because this Wall Street scene is a relatively demanding part of the game. There's loads of NPCs on screen. The game also fares very very well during the combat scenes as well so here we're fighting one of the big houses. I think this seemed to make a lot more sense in the original game from 1997 but here we get to see it all rendered in high definition on the Apple Silicon Mac in 2024 on the M4 Mac Mini. <laughs> Next we're looking at another Windows title being run through crossover and this of course is the fighting game Street Fighter 6. So what's really impressive about the M4 chip is the fact that we are able to get nearly 60 FPS at the standard setting at 1080p so you could easily hit pure 60 FPS if we just turn down one or two settings. Here we're not making use of any kind of upscaling so there's a lot of room for improvement here and already it's extremely impressive especially considering that this is a Windows game being run through all of these translation layers. If you look at the frame timing on the right it's all flat lined and pretty smooth making this a great title to play on a Mac. Now I believe this doesn't actually work online at the moment. In the future I'll be testing out Tekken 8 which does allow online multiplayer to work but anyway this is cool to see that this game is running especially because I didn't do any pre-shaded compilation that's available in the settings. This is all just pure vanilla gameplay. Anyway, it would be really cool to see Capcom bring this natively to the Mac, especially as it uses the RE engine, the same engine used in the natively optimized Resident Evil games. The Mac could really use with some proper multiplayer online titles. And lastly, we're looking at one of my favorite games of 2024, which is the PC Windows port of Ghost of Tsushima running on Apple Silicon Mac via crossover. This is one of those games through actual testing on the Mac, which I've actually fallen in love with playing. There's an expansive open world with interesting dynamic gameplay and the combat and reward progression system is really addictive. Anyway this is a Windows title being run through crossover. If you want to get this to work then you need to use the F16C patch provided by Vladimir Prog. I'll leave a link to this in the description. This helps to bypass certain checks that the game is looking for when running on certain older Windows CPUs. Stuff like AVX which is actually supported on macOS Sequoia but also F16C as well. Anyway it's cool to see that 1080p medium is possible on this game. I've had to up scale it a bit in order to get a better frame rate. But anyway, the fact that this is possible through translation layers on the Mac is seriously impressive. Anyway, please let me know in the comments what you think about the gaming performance of this brand new M4 Mac Mini. How does it stack up against other alternatives? I'll be doing testing on the M4 Pro version of the Mac Mini in the very near future on live stream and on video. So please make sure to check it out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.